All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we do need a motion to appoint a acting chairman for this today's meeting. No. Close enough. Bob Benkowski. Is there a second for that motion? Motion second. All in favor of Ben being the Bob Benkowski being the acting chair. Say aye. Yes, it was. Caldwell. Ben Kowski. Bula. Here. All three. Pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And do make sure you speak up. This is the microphone for the people online. The first application is for Joanna Krizbicki. This is an after effect special exception request under section 405.12c of the Adams County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance to allow an accessory structure on property without a primary residence on property located in the Northwest quarter, Southeast quarter, section 31, town 16, North range seven East, lot 68, Whispering Oak subdivision. Address is 647 Evergreen Drive in the town of Newchester. Um, the applicant is requesting to place an accessory structure with on a property without a home. Uh, the structure is already there. Uh, so that's why this is an after the fact request. My understanding is she went to the town meeting and she is on the online. Went to the town meeting last week. We have not re received the town participation form, so I do not know if the town approved it or not. Individual here. Yep, Joanna, did you go to the town meeting on two, last week? Yes, I did. Yes. yes. And I was, was not, the... I was not aware of um, that I was supposed to send out those letters to uh, neighboring uh, owners, but I did. Right after uh, my meeting with the town, I uh, I went and uh, sent. I have all the receipts from the postal office here. Um, so all of those are uh, certified by. Uh, also so the, town did, the town didn't make a decision on the request? Uh, no, they did not. Um, so the, the town of Newchester requires that uh, their applicants for the Board of Adjustment send out certified letters also to the neighboring property owners. Um, so the town didn't make a request. At this point, I would suggest, yep. But you would need to do that as a motion and wait until the town weighs in on it. All right, Joanna, so make sure you go back to the town for their next meeting. That was the purpose of sending out those letters. Um, and then you'll be back on our agenda next month. Okay, the next meeting is on the 20th uh, of March. So uh, I will that, that would be the town meeting. Yes. Ours is the first Wednesday of April. 
Okay. Okay, I will go to New Chester again uh, with the proof of uh, sending all those letters. Okay. Sounds good. The next application is for Deborah and Kevin Cole. This is a special exception request under Section 396.61G of the Adams County Shoreland Wetland Habitat Protection Ordinance to allow the establishment of a campground on property located in government lots two and seven, section two, town 20 north, range five east, lot one of CSM 6703 in the town of Rome. Um, the applicant does have state approved sanitary facilities. The request is for the establishment of a campground with four campers. Um, and as that's what was applied for, if the board approves it, that's what he would be uh, limited to. You do have the copy of the maps. Um, right behind it. You, you don't have the map? It's the, uh, yep. Um, All right, so uh, a letter from the applicant encloses information to review regarding our project located at approximately 112 County Road Z. Our hope is to provide four seasonal high-end RV sites for rent. The sites would be geared towards the 55 and older snowbirds. The plan is to have them rented as permanent sites seasonally. Each site would have a 110, 30 amp and 50 amp plugins with sewer and water hookups. We would provide a boat slip for each site on Pete and Well Lake and there is a two acre stock pond for fishing. We have an existing driveway with curb and gutter leading to the area already. We would have strict, we would have strict rules regarding quiet times and the quantity of people allowed. The benefits of the community would be, be would be bringing good customers into the area that would spend money at the surrounding local businesses and attractions. These four sites would help alleviate some of the growth problems in the surrounding campgrounds. Um, I do not. I did receive the town participation form from the town of Rome. Um, they do not object to the request. They do, one of the conditions they put on there was that Mr. Cole must obtain a town of Rome campground license also. Um, this request, the reason, reason for the town board decision, conditional use was approved in 2016. Mr. Cole presented a site plan that plan commission approved of it. And that was at their, or was, uh, the zoning administrator signed that in February of this year. We'll notify you when the public hearing it starts. Do you want to see if he has anything to add? To the applicant's online. Is there anything you want to add to that, Kevin? Um, basically, just say I do have a uh, all the gravel in four inches of gravel. The whole site would have gravel. Um, I do have state approved septic and well and water tests done. I did meet with the Wood County inspector who was inspecting uh, Romano's and just went through his list to make sure I'd be compliant. Um, I think it'd be a good addition to the county. And like I said, it'd bring in more people, more money, and obviously raise the value of the property, which would benefit Adams County and the town of Rome. Open it to the public. Anybody wishing to speak in favor of the request? You are limited to three minutes. Please state your name and address. Anybody wishing to speak in favor of the request? 
Anybody wishing to speak in favor of the request? I want to speak against it. Anybody wishing to speak against the request? Please state your name and you are limited to three minutes. Uh, my name is Tom Wazek. Uh, I am against it. I think it's, uh, it's going to add people to the area that we don't need. It's such a tight area, it's a closed area. And I live close by and uh, I just, I'm not in favor at all. Are there any, anybody else wishing to speak in opposition of the request? My name is Bob Evans. I'm also a resident of the area. I have a reservation about the post shop idea. That's a heavy traffic area, and be people, people have to cross the highway, and there's a very limited amount of soil surface between the water and the garden area. Okay. Any other, anybody else wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Well, in, in reference to what Tom said, uh, I just want to add to that that there's been, there used to be uh, no weight movies behind the houses there, and they are no longer there. And boats are always speeding through there, and that's going to be, it's going to have a lot more boat traffic. And uh, I think that'd be a safety issue too. Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition of the request? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Richard Redrick, uh, 125 Honeywell G. What, what was your last name? I'm sorry. Redrick. Can you spell that, please? R E G. R E G. Thank you. Yeah, we're basically against it just because it's a kind of a part of the dust factor already. And I think it just adds to it. If there was an on site inspection, you don't see them. There's usually dumpsters back there that never get dumped out. I'm just not sure if. This thing that gets more people back there. Plus, I'm worried about the traffic coming up there. Uh, it's a dangerous corner, as everybody knows. And the last thing I, I, I have a difficulty hearing, but did anybody cover what the special exception means? I could, yeah, I can answer that. Uh, so, the zoning ordinance has certain uses that are a permitted use, uh, for example, house, a um, couple of things like that. And then there's other items that are listed as only being allowed if granted a special exception, which is what this hearing is. Um, no, so you either have a permitted use in zoning, you have a special exception, some places call it a conditional use, um, special exception, or if you don't have either of those, it's prohibited. Special exception is almost permitted, but sometimes they're a little more, uh, they're, they're put into the special exception category because they need to be t a closer look taken at instead of just saying, yep, go ahead and do it like a, say a house. Um, so that is the purpose of this board hearing if they, they're deciding on the special exception, whether or not to approve a camera, a foresight camera. So what was that next question I asked, this is four campsites? Yes. Is this four campsites to be expanded by addendums? Is there anything more to this or is this four and that's it? The application is for four sites. If he wanted to add a fifth tomorrow, he's back to this board and it's about a two month process. Okay. And you would be notified again, exact same hearing. Anybody else wish to speak in opposition to the request? Dusty, could you turn up the volume? I can't hear any of the people that are against it. I did have a neighbor that was confused and thought that I was doing something on my old Z project. And I'm wondering if some of these people are referring to that area. This is behind Romano's and it's got a curb and gutter entrance. All right, yeah, I have the box on the mic turned all the way up I just people may not be speaking loud enough yeah and um, just just maybe ask them if they're confused because I did have one neighbor call me and she was confused thinking that I was doing something on the old Z project which is around the corner from Devil's Elbow and those right. are the connecting properties these people aren't even near my property if I heard right I, I i couldn't hear all the names but uh 
So I, I couldn't right. address what their concerns were, I guess, is my problem. So I'm bringing up the map right now on my screen, um, just so we can all see the exact location. Uh, some of the concerns, pardon me, I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit. Um, there was concern about the, the lack of space between the road and the water for the pier slips. Uh, the no wake buoys have been taken out. So boats do speed through there on a regular basis. Uh, and then there's also a concern about like dumpsters are always back there not getting emptied. Um, and it, it's, there's too much, too much clutter and, and going on back there. And then there's also the concern about the, the road, the devil's elbow um, being unsafe and adding that much more traffic to it. Did I miss anything? I think there was more. All right, and we do have one more, uh, the public comment, and you'll have a chance to respond at the end. Okay. Kevin. Stay tuned. Right. My name is Martin Vicky. I, I live from 21 Lee Road, and I bought this property uh, 2011. And we, we have the entire house invested probably with $200,000 into it. My main concern is the more aircraft we, we expand closer to our our properties, it, it might lower or affect our you know, property values. That's that's also one of the concerns that I have. Okay. Did you hear that, Kevin? Uh, some of it. It's it's hard to understand or hear. The, the, the concern was, uh, do you, you're to the east of the? I'm, I'm not that tall. <laughs> Is that you? No. We are, we are on the around the corner, around the corner, like down in here. here. Yeah. Okay. So one of the concerns was around Devil's Elbow. Uh, the gentleman was concerned about his property values by expanding campgrounds or adding campgrounds to the area. Anybody else else wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Anybody else wishing to speak in opposition to the request? This time we'll close the public hearing and the applicant can respond to the concerns that were raised. Uh, based, let him re, let him respond to the, that's, yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, basically what I'm trying to do is create a high end campground just for snowbirds, a place to relax and enjoy the community and the, in the county. I'm not looking to, you know, create any kind of hazards or anything like that. Um, I do have a, you know, a state approved driveway that, you know, is curb and guttered entrance. It's right next to Romano's. Um, you know, I'm not trying to hurt the community in any way. Anything I've done up there has been more to, you know, enhance the area. You know what I mean? And create more tax dollars for everybody. And, and, uh, let more people enjoy the property. As far as, as far as the slips go, I own all of Romano's slips. Um, I own that whole property down through there. I don't own the actual docks, but I own that, that whole strip of property. That's quite a wide area in Petenwell. So there's no hazards with boats traveling fast in that area. You know what I mean? Um, I've lived there you know, I've owned property there since the 1980s and I've seen all those houses across the bay sell multiple times. And uh, I paid my taxes and I've, you know, this is part of my retirement. My wife and I wanted a, a little extra income for our, um, for our health insurance and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where this is coming from. That way it doesn't come out of my retirement fund. So I did retire three years ago and, and, uh, like I said, I'm all about Rome and the community and, and uh, investing in that area. Um, I'm not out to do anything that's gonna look bad. You know, as far as dumpsters go and stuff, that would affect me also, you know what I mean? I, I appreciate nature. I've done nothing but improve it in that area. I've worked with the DNR on some plantings of fish habitat for Northern habitat coming up that creek 
Um, I put 15,000 in that pond, just digging it to a depth that would hold fish. Um, I've kind of did all the steps required. And like I said, this is enough. You know, I've, I've spent the money, you know what I mean? If, if this campground doesn't go through, then I'm going to put a camper back there and I'm going to put one home back there. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I think it's a win-win for Rome and I think it's a win for the community. So I guess that's all I have to say. Kelly, I got a question. What do you consider an IM campground in relationship to what Romano's asking? Why would yours be different? Who, who am I speaking with? Bob Benkowski. I'm one of the committee members there. Okay. Um, Basically, it's going to be a high end. There's a there's a 248 yard uh, screen wall to block me from Romano's, and and this is high end. It's gonna it's gonna hopefully get a group of snowbirds to come in and bring their campers in every year and uh, and spend money in our community. They also have access to the UTV trails because the UTV trail runs through there. So that would be another positive for that. Can I bring any questions? Justin, I have, a, I have a question, and this is here under special exception. Specifically, why or what ordinance are we flirting with violating? Not flirting with violating anything. So the, I'll bring up the ordinance here. Um, so the property is currently, the yellow is zoned recreational residential. That's the zoning district under Shoreland zoning. As you go down, you'll see here are the permitted uses, single family dwellings, home occupations, et cetera, all the way through. As you keep going, special exceptions. The following uses are permitted upon issuance of a special exception permit according to the procedure set for this, the Board of Adjustment. So if somebody wanted to put in a, a single wide manufactured home, this is the same exact process. And as you go down here, recreational camps and campgrounds, recreational and educational camps shall conform to, there's some state laws and that's what he's referring to with Wood County. Um, but if somebody wanted to put in a nursing home, they can apply to come to this board and request to put one in. Um, if you are in the permitted category, you don't have to go through this process. It's just allowed without question. Um, so you, you can kind of tell the difference. There's Maybe the basic stuff is the best way to put in permitted uses. Okay. You get down to the special exceptions and they're a little more involved. He could just as easily come to the board and request to put up a hotel. So he owns the property and by law, he has the right to use it for a purpose. Yes. So we're saying we're discussing what the purpose might be. You're discussing whether his request for a campground is uh, compatible with the surrounding area. Is it detrimental to the community? Well, Those types. Yeah, there's already a campground there. And that's the, the conversation board. the board would have to. I mean, that's your. And he's going to make some improvements. He's applying to dredge that slough, which is an improvement. His trailers are spaced out more than the existing trailers that are there on the adjacent property. Uh, he's providing some topographical features, which is a benefit to the environment. I notice he also lifts a buffer zone between the campground that he's proposing and the and the water that he's providing, that he's dredging out. The only question I had 
was on the south part of that where he's dredging. That's all legal in accordance with the DNR. What he's doing, as long as he doesn't put the soil in the water or along a shoreline or in a protected zone, but along the south part of that, I'm suggesting some demarcation so they know where he dredged out and where the other part of the slough exists. Maybe some rocks or a berm or something in there. For where are you? Uh, Adam County Certified Survey Map, yep. And down to this end over here. He's going to dredge this part here. And then there's no demarcation. You know, the slew keeps going. It's Kevin, on the south side of your, the pond. That would be at well, the dike area if we're talking? Yep. Okay. Are you continuing to uh, excavate down there? No, no, that's the actual dike. That's an existing dike that was there when I bought the property. Oh, yeah. The picture is different than the, than the survey. <laughs> that's, yeah, I agree with you. It does. But there, yeah, there's no continued. Dredging no. down that. The water, the water height difference is about two to three foot from the, say, let's just say the cricks or the exit side or whatever, the the pool or whatever that's below the dike. Okay. So the water levels are two different heights. There's about a two to three foot difference in height and water level. That, so no, that would never get dug out or extended in any way. Does that address your concern, Bob? Oh, yes. I, I have a question if I can ask you. Yeah, so this is, so you guys are deliberating. Me, tell me, the people that are here that are against it, have you all attended the town meeting? Were you at the town meeting? We're just saying. Okay. Well, the zoning administrator approved it recently, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, it was the unanimous decision. But it was back in 2016, correct? Uh, I had a meeting with them uh, when I was down in Arizona, and the committee or the commission voted um, five to zero to approve. This time? Yes, for this part of it, yep. They'd already been approved for a campground back in 2016. Okay, so there, there was another meeting on it, and that's when the zoning administrator signed it, uh, but they, it had started back in 2016. Um, and this is the public hearing, so there is no, at the town level, it's not necessarily a public hearing. Um, it would have been on their agenda, but they don't notify anybody. Um, we only have one town that does. Yes. Can you scroll the map toward the north more? Yeah, okay. So that slew of bucks on someone else's property there. Is that correct? No, the lines aren't right there. No, no. it's been surveyed. You have a survey there in your hands. The property lines, the, the green lines on the map, and this is true countywide, can be off by up to 50 feet. They're, they're for a guide, for ge general reference only. Um, and I believe this is the area that we were, that you were referring to is where the pier slips will be. Straight across from. Um, it'd be straight out from the driveway. Um, if you pull up your, there it is, the rectangle there, that's all part of the 
pond property. And then also if you go one rectangle past, there's a triangle area there. That's all part of the pond property. Nothing will be done in that area, just straight across from the driveway. So this is where the piers will be? Yep. Okay. And technically that piece next to it is also Debbie's and my property. So that, that one, well, all of them are actually, the one to the north also in front of Romano's. Oh, okay, yep. Stating here that you're going to have strict rules regarding quiet times and fun to your people. Do you have anything like that in writing? I haven't. I haven't had a lawyer draw that up. That's an expensive thing that you know for liability reasons, and then also for you know that I'd have to get drawn up. I do have some samples. I have a sample of a campground up in Point, and uh, that's pretty much the one I'm going to go with. But I have to have a lawyer put our names in it and do all that prior to renting. But I want to create a, you know, a nice quiet area for elderly people to relax basically is what I want. Do you have a, in, in that sample or what you're planning on doing, do you have a, a idea what you're planning for a quiet time? Uh, quiet time will probably be 9, 30, 10 o'clock would be the okay. quiet time. It's kind of a standard, you know, across the board. It might be a little louder next door, but but it'll be quiet on our campground. So the committee can put any conditions on that they see fit. If you, I mean, even without like his document, if you want to put a condition on that, quiet times ten o'clock or any other conditions you see fit to make sure it's compatible, that's up to the committee. For the yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That that's kind of my goal anyway to keep a nice clean campground. Kevin, I have another question. There's a campground. Please, there's a meeting going on. There's a campground to the south of where you are, right? It's on the uh, west side of Z. How do you compete with something like that where these guys got hundreds of camp campers there? So what makes you think People are going to come to your campground when you have the one down the road with the, all the amenities it has to offer. I have a stocked pond. You can catch 11 bass in about 20 minutes. Um, I've got crappies, bluegills, perch. I've got a large number of perch. You can catch multiple perch. It's a, it's a unique area. It, it allows them to get on their UTV and take a drive go down to one of the local bars, enjoy a breakfast or a lunch or dinner. Um, it's very unique back there. You can watch the eagles feed in that just about every day. They, they really give me a workout trying to keep it stocked. Um, I've got osprey that feed there. I've got two nesting pair of Canadians and I've got two nesting pair of um, mallards on the pond. I've got blue herons that are, I can give you pictures of all this stuff, um, deer, that come along that hillside and come across all the time. There's no fields in that area, so they feed pretty heavy on that irrigated land that I put in now. Uh, they're doing a great job of fertilizing, but it's it's a unique spot for something that we don't have anywhere. And that's for a place where a snowbird can park his, his $100,000, $150,000 uh, motorhome. You've got state-of-the-art sewer water, um, electric, um, we've tested it um, with a with some heat and some uh, air conditioning systems and stuff just to make sure everything works properly. Um, it, it's beautiful back there. You're looking at a hillside. You feel like you're in a state park. Um, I've I've landscaped that I put fourteen hundred dollars worth of trees in there. Um, we've got a, a buffer zone. I'm working with with our county guy there on a grant to put in specially design plants, a thousand dollar grant. And then that also means I contribute another thousand dollars to it. I've been doing work with the DNR on, on fish plantings. I mean, on uh, uh, plantings, trying to get the Northerns to come up and spawn in that area that I have to the South. Um, I've done nothing but I fish habitat around the island. Um, you will see 
more fish in the habitat around that island than you'll see on all of Petenwell. Um, I've got a bald eagle's nest right in my backyard on the island. I mean, I've, I've done nothing but try to improve nature. I would never intentionally hurt nature in any way, shape, or form. And that's why I went through all the steps starting in 2016 with planning of this. You know, it's, it's been an ongoing process and a project. And my whole goal was just to create enough money coming in to help pay my wife's and my health insurance when she retires. That's pretty much the goal, but it's, it's also to improve the community. I bought a piece of property for 220,000 there and, and we've already, we've already pulled in about a million one of tax dollars you guys are going to get. Oh, hang on just a sec. Hey, bear, knock it off. But um, I've done nothing but try to improve Adams County. And I've, I, I think if you looked at pictures of that whole area in the past, uh, it's pretty rough. I also gave the county a spot to put all their soils on that property, which saved the county probably four or five hundred thousand plus the retaining wall that was a million three. I sent them, a, sold them a small chunk that got away from that. So I've been doing everything I can to help the county and the community up in that area improve that area. Um, now, when you go to Romano's, there are no septic systems with their campers. All they have is water. They have to go to a shower house to shower and stuff. This is something a little different, and it's and it's way better than down the road. You know what I mean? This is this is nature. It's you're allowed to sit down and enjoy nature in this spot. It's it's a. I drive by there. Okay, I drive there every day. So, uh, it's pretty good. I appreciate that. Uh, are there any more questions from the community? No. Robert. Well. I read this, I actually, we rarely get a proposal that's put together this thorough. And I for one appreciate that. It's gone down all the places. Unfortunately, it's an improvement for more housing and people in the area. You know, this is good. Bob, you need to speak up. Kevin can't hear anything you're saying. Well, and you have to address the board. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve this application. I more to say. You had your opportunity. All right. Okay. There is a motion to approve. I will second that. I would like to add into that motion, though, about the strict rules regarding quiet times and the quality of people. Would that be fine? Yeah, you should make that. There's already a motion in a second, so you're on debate of the motion. So you would need to amend the motion to include the rules, whatever conditions you're wanting to place on it. And then there would have to be a second vote on that and then vote back to the original. Okay, Robert. Do I make that motion again? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, make the motion to approve, but adding to it the strict rules regarding quiet times and quantity of people allowed. It would be per site, I would get. Per site. Are you putting a number on it? Well, I'd like him to define that. So 10 o'clock on the quiet time, I think you said was okay. fine. Um, the people per site, Kevin, what was, what was your plan on that? Um, you know, I could follow all the county rules on their campsite. I haven't, I haven't looked at their campsites and, and what their rules are, but I could follow the county rules and stuff, you know, if that eases we everybody. Don't have, we don't have any. Oh, about fire pits and barbecues and things like that. We have no regulation regarding any of that. The town of Rome may, but we do not. All those conditions would require they have to come from you three. Okay. I guess we're going to approve this with the quiet time. There's no limit on people. The only thing I would say that you out here is your course on this is to watch what happens there, right? It's just like short term rental. People raise out three times, you lose the permit. And so I would suggest to you, if you're concerned about this, you monitor this operation. 
And if they feel it's out of hand, you report that to the town of Rome. They may have approved it, but they also have a right to protect your interests as well. So would that, would that have something to do with saying boat traffic out of hand or there are people on the docks screaming and yelling. That's true. You have to identify where these boats came from. I mean, there's a lot of boats on Peakwell. Now you identify that they're coming from that campground. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, you, I, think, but, I think you need that. So he made a motion with the 10 o'clock to amend the application to have a 10 o'clock quiet time. You guys will need a second for that. Campfires, no bonfires. Like in an individual pit? Yeah, I have four pits, one for each site. Four, four bought and corrugated pits. You want that as part of the motion though? Yes, please. So quiet time at 10, no bonfires. I mean, uh, how do you, how do you? Large bonfires outside of fire pits. outside of fire pits. Yeah. There we go. We'll go with that one. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so that's a motion. We would need a second on that. Unless you're adding more. A second. As amended. Yeah. Stay as amended. Right. Second as, as amended. amended. Thank okay. you. Okay. Take a roll call. Call roll. Yes. Benko. Yes. Ula. Yes. Yes. All right, so that would be on the amending the original motion. Or yeah. Now you have to vote on the amended motion. Now the conditions are attached. Now you need to vote on the motion, the actual application with the condition. Roll call. Call Yes. 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 The application is approved. Uh, Dusty, Dusty, yeah. could you give me a list of the names of people that have concerns? I can kind of, you know, work with them and make sure that they don't, you know, if they'd yeah, like to get is. their name and phone number, I can contact them and, and get their concerns. I couldn't hear them, you know what I mean? But I'll be able to work with them and make sure that their concerns are met. So. Yep, they did sign into the, to, for the public hearing and that is public record. So we'll get that as part of the uh, other information that we have to send you. Thank you. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Any correspondence? No. Is that the next meeting date? Um, April something. April 5th, I believe. Yep. And I think we'll have a couple of applications, one table, then one new one. Motion to adjourn. Second that. You make oh, I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I second. Okay. Oh, I'm ready to go. Okay.